Peace and Pan-Africanism, peace and Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism, peace and Pan-Africanism. This is your big brother, Dr. Umar Ifatunde Ogun Tade, coming to you live and direct from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This is the Prince. This is King Kong Consciousness. This is Intercontinental Ifatunde, RB Jesus, Notorious RBG, coming to you live and direct from the city of Philadelphia. I have a special message for my students at the University of Minnesota. And to the Twin Cities community, I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming off the show Be Love two nights ago, Thursday for Black History Month. Y'all jam-packed the auditorium, Northrop Auditorium. There was a lot, a lot of love, a lot, a lot of love, a lot, a lot of love. I can't thank the students of the University of Minnesota enough for showing up and showing out. Y'all showed me the kind of love that I get at the HBCUs. Y'all showed me the kind of love that I get at the HBCUs. And I didn't know I had that kind of love at the University of Minnesota. So I want to say thank you to all of the University of Minnesota students who came out to show love. And of course, to the Twin Cities, Minneapolis, St. Paul community who came out to support me as well. I enjoyed the event thoroughly. With that being said, I am disappointed to have to tell the students of the University of Minnesota that your black student union president has not yet remitted his full financial obligation to Dr. Umar Ifatunde for my appearance. He paid the deposit prior to my arrival. I reached out asking for the balance. He has not responded. Maybe he's busy. No problem. He might be busy. It's the weekend. Understandable. But for my students at the University of Minnesota, please get word to the Black Student Union president that Dr. Umar is awaiting payment of the final balance of his appearance. And if I do not get that, plus my airfare, as we contractually agreed to, I may have to do a little bit of expose on some of the unethical things that I think may have transpired building up to my visit at the University of Minnesota. And I'm really not here to expose any young undergraduate brothers as a former BSU president at a PWI myself. I don't really want to get into that. But my dear brother, if you think you're not going to fulfill your contractual obligations to me financially for the price at which you charge the community to come to that event, if you think you're not going to fulfill your contracted obligation after the amount of money you charged the community to attend that event, I can assure you things will not go that way. If I need to have my attorney contact university administration, that's exactly what will happen. Let's not go there, my brother. Pay what you owe and let's move on. Otherwise, I'm going to do a full expose. And I don't think you want this black student union membership. I don't think you want the African students of the University of Minnesota to know everything about how this process unfolded. So please, good brother, pay your debts. Let's move on. Or I will have to expose you to my beautiful brothers and sisters at the University of Minnesota. And I don't want to do that. Now, with that and to my students at the University of Minnesota, if you have any information on the backstory behind my visit, to my students at the University of Minnesota, if you have any information on the backstory, feel free to text me any information you have on the backstory because I got a whole lot I can tell that I don't want to tell. I just want what's old and we move on. But if my brother thinks he's going to run a scam on the Prince of Pan-Africanism, I will have to do some exposing. You can reach me at 215-989-9858, 215-text message only. 989-9858-215-989-9858. Now, I'm only going to be with you guys for 10 minutes. 
I'm only going to be with you guys for 10 minutes. Make sure you hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Make sure you hit the PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. Okay. Information for the Africa trip will be out on February the 14th. Information for the Africa trip will be out on February the 14th. As far as Carl Weathers, Apollo Creed, rest in peace. He just joined the ancestors a few days ago. Rest in peace to him. Condolences, support and love to his family and friends. I was a big Carl Weathers fan. Predator is one of my favorite uh, movies. Rocky, obviously. You know, he was in uh, Action Jackson. Carl Weathers was definitely a pioneering black actor. Sylvester Stallone, I believe, did him dirty. Allegedly, I believe that Sylvester Stallone did Apollo Creed, Carl Weathers, dirty. Uh, he was underpaid for Rocky 1, 2, and 3. He was underpaid for Rocky 1, 2, and 3. And when Carl Weathers demanded appropriate Compensation for Rocky Four, Sylvester Stallone expediently had him murdered in the movie by way of Ivan Drago, and he was removed from the Rocky Enterprise. I'm having a hard time understanding why Carl Weathers was killed off in the Rocky Enterprise after he finally got paid a decent wage for his role in that film. So, as far as I'm concerned, Sylvester Stallone did Carl Weathers dirty and for him to do a little video talking about how much Carl Weathers meant to Rocky. To me, that was complete bull ish, complete propaganda, complete. Let me try and save my backside from public disgrace. That's what I think. Allegedly, that's where I stand. Because Apollo Creed was more valuable to Rocky than Sylvester Stallone. He made Rocky one. He made Rocky two. He made Rocky four. Rocky three, maybe not so much because his role wasn't that major. But he definitely made them. And he was underpaid. If Sylvester Stallone really cares about Carl Weathers the way he claims, pay his family all the back money you owe him. If Sylvester Stallone really claims to care about Carl Weathers the way he claims, pay his family all the back money that you owe him. Now. Now, brothers and sisters. When we talk about solving the problems of African people. When we talk about solving the problems of African people. We have to make sure we put our problems within the proper context of discussion. A lot of times we don't put our problems within the proper context of discussion. And what I mean by putting our problems within the proper context of discussion is there's a couple things you have to understand whenever you deal with black folks. There's a couple things you have to understand whenever you deal with black folks. And I'm talking to African people, Caucasian nation. I'm going to ask that you respectfully leave the live. This is an African family conversation. Caucasian nation, Snow Bunny Brigade. Neanderthal community, I'm going to ask you to please leave the live. I'm talking to Africans right now. This is not a space for Caucasian nation, Neanderthal nation, Snow Bunny Brigade. Please exit the live. Now, now, when you're trying to solve the problems of African people with African people, you have to put that process in its proper political context. What do I mean when I say when you're trying to solve the problems of African people with African people, you have to put that process in the proper political, social, economic context. Number one, certain things you can almost assume when you bring in black people together. I'm talking to African people, Caucasian nation, please exit. Neanderthal nation, please exit. Number one, you have to assume that most of the people there 
are not willing to use their money in a consistent way to benefit the political, economic and social gain of the black community. You can almost assume this. Black people post Dr. King, we do not have a culture, a political culture. We do not have a political culture that requires us to use our money to benefit the collective. We will use our money to open restaurants. We will use our money to open black businesses. We will use our money to pay for our college child's tuition. We will use our money to buy a car and a house. But we do not like to use our money to advance our political and economic agenda. Black people don't do that. That's why we're losing in America because every group knows Negroes are too selfish financially to use their money together to help themselves. The only time they do that is if they're doing it in the name of Jesus, Muhammad, fraternity, sorority, Masonic affiliation. They don't do it under the banner of being African. They don't do it under the banner of being black. They don't do it under the banner of being American African. Every, every community uses their money to benefit their politics. Every community uses their money to benefit their politics, except American Africans. And this is even true for many of our diasporan brothers and sisters. This is also true for our Diasporan Africans, we as a race of people don't usually use our money to help people who look like us unless we're getting something back from it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why when you look at black billionaires and millionaires, that's why when you look at black billionaires and millionaires. That's why when you look at black billionaires and millionaires, they rarely give back to their community because we don't have a culture of giving back to our own. They might give in the name of the NAACP, white founded and controlled institution. They may give in the name of the Urban League, white founded and controlled institution. They may give in the name of a grassroots organization, governmental controlled institution. They will give to United Way and Red Cross and the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. But when you ask them about giving back to black people, not people of color, not minorities, not impoverished Americans, not disadvantaged communities. But when you ask them about giving back to black people, they're nowhere to be found. They're nowhere to be found. One of the biggest differences between black millionaires and billionaires and the millionaires and billionaires of any other race. When you find a billionaire other than a black billionaire. They're personally responsible for creating at least 10 to 20 other millionaires. That's how other cultures operate. The Jews, the Anglo-Saxons, the Arabs, the East Indians, the Asians. That's how they operate, not in the black community. In the black community, we don't want other Africans to win. We have an HNIC problem that we have not addressed. The Negro community has an HNIC problem that we have not appropriately addressed. We have a plantation mentality. We still think like plantation slaves. Oh, yes, we do. We have a HNIC on the plantation. Only one Negro was appointed by the slave master to be the slave driver. He wasn't the overseer. He was the driver. He answered to the overseer. He's the driver. Al Sharpton is the driver. Benjamin Crump is the driver. Jesse Jackson is the driver. Congressional Black Caucus, they are the drivers. Their job is to drive Negroes, herd us together. 
the job of the driver. You have the owner, the master, and the driver. The driver's job was to keep black people operating in the manner that the power structure needed them to do. Your job is to drive them to work. Your job is to drive them from their beds to the plantation in the morning. Your job is to drive them to the ballot box on election day. Your job is to make Negroes do what the power structure wants them to do. Until black people use black dollars to build black power, we will be exterminated. You have to use black power to black dollars to build black power. You have to use black dollars to build black power. So getting back to the topic, the political context of trying to help and organize Africans. Because number one, you don't help black people unless you organize in black people. Anybody claiming to help black people and they're not trying to organize black people is an opportunist and a hustler. Let me say this again. Let me say this again. The main thing black people need is not a handout. The main thing black people need is not charity. The main thing black people need is not Jesus or Muhammad. The main thing black people need is organization. The most important thing you can do for African people, I don't care if you in Africa, I don't care if you in France, I don't care if you in the UK, I don't care if you in Germany, Ireland, Austria, I don't care if you in China, Australia, the South Pacific, I don't care if you in Jamaica, Haiti, black Puerto Rico, black Dominican Republic, black Cuba, I don't care if you in Turks and Caicos, Aruba, Bonaire, I don't care if you in St. Thomas, St. Croix, St. Martin, St. Lucia, I don't care if you in Texas, I don't care if you in Toronto, Montreal, I don't care if you are in Panama, Belize, I don't care where you are, the most important thing African people need in this world is organization. Organization. Why do you say that, Ifa Tunde? Not reparations. Nope. I disagree. I disagree. I disagree. Reparations is not the most important thing black people need. Put it on a shirt. Put it on a banner. Put it on a hoodie. Tell the whole world that the Prince of Pan-Africanism said on February the 9th, nine representing the ancestors, Ibashe Agungun, on February the 9th, Dr. Umar Ifatunde said from Philadelphia that the most important thing for black people is not reparations, it's not money, it's not charity, it's not handout, it's not Jesus, it's not Muhammad, it's not Moses, it's organization. The most important thing we need, first of all, no man should be worrying about another man's hairstyle. That's number one. No man should be worrying about another man's hairstyle. Let, let, we need some testosterone baptism. We're going to get we're going to baptize the beta males back into masculinity because there's too many black males who operate like females. Why are you worrying about another man's hair? Y'all worry about who another man sleeps with. That is beta male activity. OK. Rainbow Coalition. Come get these beta males. They on a fence anyway. Snatch them on over to the Rainbow Army. Rainbow Coalition, will you please come get these beta males? Take them from us. We don't need them. We don't want them. And the black woman doesn't crave them. I said, come and get these beta males. We don't need them. We don't want them. And the black woman does not want them either. Oh, yes. Let's get back on topic. Rainbow Coalition, you have my permission to come and get these beta males. They belong with y'all anyway. We have no use for them. Rainbow Coalition, come get them. Now, getting back to my point, why does Dr. Umar say podcast interview? You know how to reach me. 215-989-9858. Podcast interview. 215-989-9858. Lecture scheduling. Consultations. Life coaching. You know what to do. 215-989-9858. I do not answer the phone. Text message only. Philadelphia, I want to see y'all Friday, March 1st at the Comedy and Consciousness event featuring some of the top comics in black America. They will be in Philadelphia, March the 1st. Dr. Umar will be hosting. 
Oakland, California. Make sure you register for the Black Boot Camp next Saturday, October, the, excuse me, February the 17th. Oakland, California, 9 to 5 at the Church of All Christ. Deadline for registration is Thursday. Whatever we got Thursday, that's what we going with. Whatever we got Thursday, that's what we going with. San Francisco, Antioch, Las Vegas, Los Angeles. Y'all better pull up to Oakland Saturday, February the 17th. Now, I'm still waiting for my invitation from Sweden. I'm still waiting on my invitation from Ireland. I'm still waiting on my invitation from Botswana. I'm still waiting on my invitation from Namibia. Mozambique and Madagascar. Let me get back to the message. Congo, we working on it now, Congo. Congo, my Guadeloupe Africans, I will see you February the 26th in Guadeloupe. I want to see all my French-speaking Africans in Guadeloupe. King Kong returns to the Caribbean Saturday, February the 26th. Guadeloupe, Ibache, Mama Solitude, Ibache, Louis Del Glass, Ibache, General Inyas, I'm coming back to Guadeloupe, revolutionary Guadeloupian Africans. I will see you February the 26th. Now, now, Morehouse College, March the 18th, Western Michigan University, February the 20th. Anyway, anyway, is that a snow bunny? No bunnies, my young lady. Uh, no bunnies. I, I, I need you to exit. No bunnies. You cannot be hunting for black men on my live. That is completely disrespectful to my political platform. No hunting for black men on my live. I'm sorry, ladies. You must exit. You must exit. Now, get. I'm sure there's a Caucasian male waiting for you somewhere. You must exit. There's no melanin here for you. There's absolutely no melanin injections on my live feed. There's snow bunnies. No melanin injections on my live feed. Now. The reason we need organization more than reparations. The reason we need organization more than reparations. If you don't have organization before you get reparations, guess what happens to the reparations? If you don't have organization before you have reparations, guess what's going to happen to the reparations? If you don't have organization before you get reparations, guess what's going to happen to the reparations? It will be wasted, exploited and stolen. And let me be honest with you. The reason why most black leaders never organize black people, they only talk. The reason most black leaders never organize black people, they only talk. The reason most black leaders never organize black people, they only talk. Is because if you were organized, you could hold them accountable. Black leaders don't want to be held accountable by black people. Black leaders don't want to be held accountable by black people. Black leaders don't want to be held accountable by black people. That's why they never organize you. Why you think the black Democrats never organize black people? They only want you to go vote. They don't never organize you because if you organize yourself, you could replace them. You could replace any black leader in America if you were organized, they don't want you to replace them. So they don't organize you. They simply drive you, drive you in the direction that the power structure wants you to go in. We don't need reparations. We need organization first. That's why I said we should not get reparations until we are organized. Save it for our grandchildren. Save the reparations for our great grandchildren. Save the reparations for our great 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 grandchildren. Save the reparations for our great 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 grandchildren. We don't need them because we're going to waste them. Without organization, you cannot apply power to benefit yourselves. Organization is the essence of liberation. Organization is the essence of liberation. Organization is the essence of liberation. If you're not talking about organizing black people, you're a scammer. You're an opportunist. You're a fraud. You're a con artist. You're a manipulator. Why do you think the black church never organizes black people? Because you would make them do something. You would make the black church do something if you made them get organized. What's my opinion on the black Greek sororities? 
I respect all the black, black Greek fraternities and sororities. A lot of great people came through the black Greek fraternities and sororities. Now, if you ask me what are they doing for black people here and now, I couldn't answer that question. Because Kamala Harris isn't doing anything with her AKA pink and green. Kamala Harris isn't doing anything for black people with her AKA pink and green. Kamala Harris isn't doing anything for the African community with her AKA pink and green. Peace and love to all my AKAs, but I need y'all to hold y'all sore roar accountable. I need the AKAs to hold their sore roar accountable. Don't go running around talking about the first black vice president was an AKA and she ain't delivered a damn thing to the black community, but a 50 years of hip hop cookout. The only thing Kamala Harris has given black America is a 50 years of hip hop cookout at her house. That is insane. That is insane. The only thing we got from the first black vice president in American history in nearly four years of office was a cookout to celebrate degenerate music in our community. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Mercy. And will we please stop with this conversation about can you fight for black people and sleep with Caucasians? I'm tired of this conversation. Can you fight for black people and sleep with Caucasians? No, you can't. No, you. That doesn't even make any sense. I'm going to fight you in the daytime. But I'm going to cross the line and sleep with your daughter at nighttime. I'm a pillow talk your daughter at nighttime. I'm going to give all my wealth to your daughter at nighttime, but I'm an advocate for black liberation. Will we please cut it out? Listen, if you're not loyal to black people, just say that. Stop making excuses to disguise your disloyalty. If you're not loyal to black people, just say that. We got too many black people who are not loyal to the community, who don't want to say it. Just say you're not loyal to black. Don't come up with all these excuses. I don't see color. I believe in Jesus. My religion don't allow me to see race. Stop making excuses. Just tell the world I don't care about black people. I only care about my damn self and my snow money. Just say it. Just say it, brothers and sisters. Yes, University of Minnesota African students. University of Minnesota African American students, thank you for coming out two nights ago, but I'm still waiting on the president of the Black Student Union to remit the balance of my honorarium and travel expensive. If he does not do that, I will be doing a full expose. I will be doing a full expose in the coming week on him and the alleged scam. So I hope he pays me so we can end this. But if he doesn't, I will be doing a full expose. He has not returned my text message to remit my balance. If you have any information on what appears to be shaping up as a University of Minnesota Black Student Union Dr. Umar lecture scam. I'm hoping that's not what it is. If you have any information on this situation, feel free to text me 215-989-9858-215. Nine eight nine nine eight five eight. So again, brothers and sisters. Again, brothers and sisters. Again, brothers and sisters. If you are not a full time advocate of black struggle, freedom, liberation, and independence, if you're not a full time advocate, just say that. For an excuse to drop out because we don't really want to work on behalf of our people. When you bring black people together, we are looking for an excuse to drop out because we really don't want to struggle for black freedom. We don't. We don't. I want all organizers to notice. 
If you're not coming to black people with Jesus and Muhammad and you coming to them with a race first program, they're going to look for a way to drop out of the movement. Black people have been psychologically conquered. The black man and woman in America have been psychologically defeated by the white power structure. We just don't want to admit it. We just don't. We have been psychologically conquered and emotionally defeated by the white power structure. We still have some good people, but we got to go fishing. We still got some good people, but we got to go fishing. We still got some good Africans, but you got to go out and find those good Africans. When I asked y'all to stand with me on behalf of Brendan Depper, very few people were actually going to show up and stand with me. Even though I've been helping you, helping your children, serving you. When I said come stand with this, stand with me to save this young brother, very few of you were going to come. You don't care about him. You don't care about what happens to black children in public school. You care about your children. You don't care about nobody else. You got to put this in context. If you are not a psychologically defeated African, please stay away from psychologically defeated Africans. They will drain your energy. A psychologically defeated African is a political spiritual vampire. A psychologically defeated African is a political spiritual vampire. A psychologically defeated African is a political spiritual vampire. If you know black folks who ain't got nothing but excuses for why we can't solve our problems, ain't got nothing but excuses for why they don't give money to real authentic grassroots causes, why they don't belong to black organizations, why they out here bunny hopping, leave them psychologically. A black man with a white woman is a psychologically defeated Negro. A black woman with a white man is a psychologically defeated Negro. Stay away. I'll be out in a few minutes. I got to get ready to get up out of here, family. I got to get ready to get up out of here, family. But I just wanted to hit y'all with a couple thoughts. Ancestors needed me to speak. Joliet, Illinois, it looks like I'm going to see you on Friday, February the 20, what's that last Friday in February? It looks like I'm going to be in Joliet, Illinois, Flint, Michigan. It looks like I'm going to see you on Monday, February the 19th, Flint, Michigan on the 19th, Kalamazoo, Michigan on the 20th, Joliet, Illinois is going to be the 23rd, Friday the 23rd in Joliet, Illinois. We working on Coppin State University. We working on the State University of New York. We got a couple other universities that we working on right now. Peace and peace.